Hello, this is me, Robert, Mr. Rook, and today I'm gonna show you how to do a classic funky house or disco house remix in style of Moto Blanco Freemasons. I know this style is pretty outdated, I know uh, people are not doing that kind of uh, remixes anymore, however, people still love it. I love it. So I hope there will be more people doing that kind of music, so just to keep up the style alive. So let's get to it. There's not a problem that I can't fix, because I can do it in the mix. Okay, let's get started. First of all, you have to know that uh, you are remixing a song. So uh, um, these days uh, when, or in other styles of, of music, um, producers usually cut a part of the original vocals and they are using it um, as a sort of like a reminder of a, a reference to the original track. However, in uh, disco house or funky house, uh, you are um, remixing the whole song. So you have to keep the structure of the song um, exactly like it is. So uh, you have to uh, have uh, verses, you have to have choruses the same as they are in the original song. So you, as you can see here in my arrangement, I have my chorus here, uh, I have my first verse, chorus again, uh, verse, second verse here, chorus, breakdown, chorus. So. Um, you can keep this structure because again you are remixing a song. Now, when you're going um, to uh, to the beat, which is uh, well, you, this is very like significant. I mean, very typical uh, beat for for the funky house style. So if you are listening just to the beat, it sounds like this. Okay, however, you have to have two different um, kinds of, uh, of, uh, of your beat, one to uh, a verse and one to your chorus. So if you listen to uh, those two, first the, uh, the verse and then the chorus, You see that I added uh, more more drums, more percussions to it. Now, if you uh, remember my previous video, the Usura uh, the tutorial, I said there that uh, you have to introduce every few bars or every section of your track. You have to introduce something more and more and more. Uh, in this case, I might contradict myself, but actually, you just keep those two. Um, uh, versions of your beat and that's it uh, because again you are remixing a song and the vocals and melody is uh, is the main key is the main thing uh, rather than your drums and, and the rest of your arrangement uh, so that is why it's uh, it's better to keep it as uh, as uh, as simple as it is just few one or two fill-ins um, and you you are not getting any crazy with with you with your rhythm section. Now, if you are listening to uh, the beat, uh, so it contains more or less pretty standard things. So first, a, a kick. Then obviously we have a snare. And then we have a clap. Okay, however, the clap is, uh, um, is played 20 milliseconds before the snare. Why? Because it gives you this really cool sort of like raising uh, effect. So like this sound, I know it sounds pretty crazy, but actually 
it is it, it all together it sounds pretty cool so listen to this together clap and snare so all together you 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 can hear that it's starting to make sense and uh, again uh, um, the snare is pretty dry while the the clap is has a lot of reverb and uh, it it it, it uh, so it gives the space to your to your beat the next part is uh, the the hi hat and the last parts are the loops most of the producers in those days used also the vengeance uh, um, uh, loops and uh, I did the same thing the only, well the only thing I added here so let's play the, the loop first this is uh, the loop for the chorus and the next one will be the, uh, the loop for the verse I mean first for the verse and then for the chorus okay so if you are if you are listening to the if uh, uh, you are listening to the uh, chorus a uh, loop uh, I added the transient master uh, it uh, it's a transient designer it's a it's a copy of SPL transient designer uh, by native instruments but what it does well it, the the loops especially from vengeance they are very compressed they are very squashed and uh, you hear a lot of reverb you hear a lot of noise in the background so it just this is just like a wall of sound so and what you and actually you do you don't really need it so it's better if uh, if you uh, lower the sustain so you will just uh, emphasize uh, with uh, with transient master or transient designer you will just uh, emphasize the actual sounds, the transients, and um, the sustain will be as short as possible. So uh, again, of course, you can go extreme. But of course, then it sounds unnatural. But uh, it's oh, it is always a very, very good thing if you are uh, using the uh, pre-processed or, or processed uh, uh, loops now uh, let's go to bass uh, the bass line it's also very distinctive to that style uh, if you listen to this okay all you have to do is to recreate the funky bass line. Um, uh, in other styles uh, of dance music, producers mostly um, uh, work on the sound or sometimes melody uh, of, uh, of the bass line. However, in this case, uh, you have to bring the funk to the it has to be funky it it matters less how what kind of instrument or what kind of library you use in my in in my case again i used the uh, scrumby mm bass library from native instruments uh, this is a live bass guitar emulation or or, or, or sample library but it can be anything that will sound similar. The, the whole point is how it's played. And again, you have to play it like a funky uh, bass guitar player. So again, if you're listening to the old remixes or uh, even older funky um, uh, songs from, I don't know, James Brown or maybe recent uh, Bruno Mars, uh, you will listen to the, to the bass line. And then you will know how they they play the bass, and then you will you will know how to make the same bass line. So again, the bass line um, sounds like this, but maybe better with with the with the beat with the whole rhythm section 
it sounds like this. Again, these short notes um, played in a funky way gives this funky groove together uh, together with with the with the with the beat. Now, in all those old remixes, piano played the huge role. You can always hear the piano. You can always hear the piano progressions, typical house pro, uh, piano progressions, and I am no different in that case. So if you listen to the piano, it sounds like this. And I, for that purpose, I use a brilliant library from F9 Audio uh, that uh, is um, already has uh, great chord progressions or great chords. Okay. Uh, uh, so, but but sometimes, sometimes in, in with these libraries, you uh, or any other libraries actually. Uh, they are uh, recorded uh, in certain tone, um, so this one actually is uh, D minor, okay, but your vocals are in different tonation. So uh, what I did in that case, uh, the, I use the sound shifter from Waves, and if you are listening to the chords without it, they sound like this. And with it, definitely you can hear that I lowered it for two, two semitones. So together with the vocals, it's starting to make sense. We're full of love and hate. We're all different, but we're still the same. Sometimes we fall and we make. So we can see it. It makes a difference. But then I uh, had to recreate the same, play the same in MIDI. For, for other instruments that are background instruments, so if you are listening to them, so there are only three back, uh, background instruments a pad, some bells just to give this sort of like sweetness and, and a nice feeling, hard work warming feeling to the, uh, to the whole remix. Um, the last part of when we're talking about the piano, it's uh, um, well in the, in, the second, in the second breakdown, I uh, had to actually play the piano myself uh, or recreate the piano. Uh, for the reason, um, well, just listen to it. Okay, so uh, here you can you can hear that these are just the chords. And here I'm playing the melody that like a, a real pianist and there is a pretty simple way to do it actually so if you are uh, looking in this part the MIDI part uh, and you have here a chord and then you can see here if you are uh, enlarge it I just just cut uh, these these whole notes here here and here. So if you listen to them, you see? So uh, this is pretty easy way to do it, to do a melody if you just have the chords. Okay? Uh, now, another 
thing that was always present or pretty often present and in those remixes were the strings. I have my string section over here Okay, so here I used um, contact session strings again from native instruments to play the chords they sound like this um, but you have to understand you have to know that um, the string section is not just one instrument there are plenty of instruments there are cellos there are viol violins and so on and there are like a few persons playing the same thing in unison so uh, this is exactly what you have to do you have to recreate this string section so it just cannot be just one uh, melody notes you have to really double them uh, with uh, uh, the best with, with different libraries or different sounds so uh, mm, string sounds so for a for that purpose or for, for that reason I used Nexus with uh, old string preset that sounds like this So again, it gives you this old school feeling, uh, sort of like Mellotron um, emulation. And the last thing is just one simple played in the background uh, long string. Okay. And if you want to add a little more of funk, but if that's it, so far it's not enough for you, then of course you can add some funky guitars. Uh, there you can use, um, uh, you can of course hire a real guitarist player, or you can use a funky guitarist from native instruments. Uh, however, there are plenty and plenty of libraries with funky guitars, and this is what I used. Uh, so, if you listen to the guitars... I just uh, cut at some sounds, uh, some loops from, uh, from uh, uh, F9 Funk Guitarist Library and uh, um, as you can see I have two. Uh, the one is playing sort of like a melody And the second is the wow or wow up uh, effect or a duck effect um, that is played like this. Uh, so you can pan them for uh, also that. So for example, this plays a little bit left. You can see this play plays a little bit right. So it will also wider uh, your uh, your um, mix a little bit. Uh, now, another important thing is when the, you have your arrangement and you have your parts, so um, uh, it's good to filter and play less in the, uh, in the verses. So again, in the chorus you open, you play everything, you just give it all the way. And uh, with, uh, with uh, the verses you just dim everything down. So, for example, if you are listening to the piano, the piano in the verses sounds like this. Okay, and then uh, before, before the main chorus, it started to open and then it's full in the, in the, in the chorus. So, so uh, these are the main uh, parts. As you can see, again, it's pretty simple thing. Uh, you, we are talking again about remixing uh, a song. So vocals 
is most important thing and everything else is just supportive. So you have to remember about it. And um, well, I hope you liked it. This is more or less that's it. Um, if you will do, I know this, this again, I know this style is pretty old. I know this style is, uh, is outdated, but I still love it. I still love to play it. I still love to listen to it. And it just brings a big smile on my face. And if if you remix a song or you are produce a song, and then for fun or maybe for additional profit, uh, lucky for you, you will make a remix. Just do it like this, just to keep the style alive. Just bring the funk back. People still love it. It's still fun uplifting happy music and uh, you cannot go go wrong with this so uh, thank you very much for watching and see you again in my next tutorial if you have any questions uh, place them uh, in uh, in the comment section remember to subscribe um, and uh, that's it see you goodbye in this world.